subject of sadness and depression. If you live life, then you're going to experience sadness and heaviness and days where you just don't want to get out of bed. You're not a depressed person. You're not a sad person. It's not your identity. It is... It is a collective energy that's moving through you that's shutting you down temporarily but it's not even necessarily yours we don't actually know how much of what we're dissolving even belongs to us we inherit so much stress and sadness from our lineages from our culture from the past and yes some of it is from what actually happens in our lives but sometimes we are given something to dissolve, something to contend with, which is heavy and can shut down the body. And those are the days where we're lying in bed and we just want to stay there forever. And there's a real doom and heaviness. And it's an opportunity to dissolve something that we don't necessarily know is even ours. And it does cause a lot of disturbances in the mind as it's exiting or as we're holding space for it. Because when that shadow is in the physiology and is moving through and exiting, the thoughts will go negative. And the thoughts are not facts. So whenever we're depressed, Always try and, if you even have the energy, write down any thoughts that come up to kind of create space between you and what is passing through. And even better, just stay out of the headspace that's going to, all the thoughts are going to get distorted. And feel the heaviness. Feel into the heaviness. Even if you think, I'm going to die if I feel into the heaviness. No, you won't. Feel into the heaviness. And it will pass. And there is an intelligence to it as well. Because the thoughts, when they go really negative, the body doesn't want you to act on those thoughts. So therefore, it shuts the body down so you can't move. So it can be quite useful. Because if you start to follow the thoughts that you think when you're sad and depressed, that wouldn't be a good thing to do. And so... There are things you can do to gracefully move through it, whether that is breathing techniques, meditation is very, very powerful, actually, when you're depressed. Meditation works best, actually, initially when you're depressed because there's a real desire to know oneself beyond those thoughts and beyond the body that almost fuels the transcendental process and the witnessing. So they have done studies and it's really, really amazing that, that people that are depressed respond so well to meditation and mindfulness. So being in the body in a non-judgmental way, knowing that whatever you're experiencing will pass in its own time. So knowing that whatever is happening in the body will pass in its own time and you don't need to judge it. You don't need to judge yourself. You're not a bad person. You haven't failed. There's nothing wrong with you. What you're experiencing is a human experience. It's a dissolving of part of the collective shadow and I thank every depressed or anxious experience and whoever holds space for it because that is a social service. You are helping to dissolve things that are in the collective that need dissolving. And I thank you for doing that. And I thank you for having the bravery to keep going and, and to, to keep doing that. 
And if you really keep going, eventually it will dissolve and you will get relief. So there is a patience that you can cultivate while you are there. And it doesn't last forever. Nothing lasts forever. Good or bad. Nothing lasts forever, good or bad. The only thing that does last forever is that transcendence that's beyond the body and that's beyond the mind and which you're likely to make contact with while you are low. A lot of people's spiritual journeys are triggered by experiencing horror and wanting to cope or experiencing sadness and wanting to to find a way out or a way of understanding it or being with it. So it serves a purpose. It triggers spirituality in a big way. And the Buddha sat under the, the Bodhi tree in a state of horror with a lot of attacks going on in the mind and eventually was liberated doesn't mean that his life got easy <laughs> afterwards. Um, I just think that maybe there was a bigger separation between the essence of who he is and his mind and body. And so don't give up. Never give up. There'll be voices that tell you you should give up, that you're useless or it's not going to change, but they're not true. And you can just write them down. Uh, know everything that you think when you're depressed and sad is not true, so don't bother acting on it. Hello, Chandy Mooney. And animals are very helpful. They always come around to give you love and support whenever you're sad. They can sense your sadness and they can help you hold space for it. So always rescue animals. They've been put on the earth to be space holders, to be our little furry spiritual guides. So you don't have to do it all on your own, ever. You're never on your own. 